Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Bitch Sesh. Hi, I'm Casey Wilson. I'm Danielle Schneider. How's everybody doing? Gosh, we have such a great episode. Oh, I'm really excited about tonight's we episode. We have an amazing guest. guest. Oh my god! What fun! What fun! I love to have a passionate housewives guest. Me on show. too. I mean, not that all of our people aren't passionate because we don't let them in the door if they don't know something. This person is as passionate about the housewives as Matt is about Kenya. Yeah, I think so. It's true. Um, <laughs> Meaning he'll kick a, a window twice yeah, in he'll the break same the window door. twice in order to get to his housewives. No, we have the loveliest, most uh, passionate housewives fan. I'm so excited. Me too. But before we get to that. What's going on with you? Well, I think I told you this, but my parents are moving. Away from <laughs> Away Jill Theron. Away from Jill <laughs> yeah. The minute she moved in, my parents were like, we're out of here. That voice carries. Yeah. Um, and so uh, when I was home over Christmas in Boca Raton, or as Raton of people has corrected me, um, they were giving me some of my old stuff and my sweet father kept like everything I've ever done. Like even just like my immunization records, they're all like filed away for me. Have you been immunized? No. <laughs> Sorry if you get bucolic plague. Um, Jenny McCarthy will be happy. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, but he saved like so much stuff. And when I was in high school, I used to do what we called thespian competitions, which is like I consider myself a drama I don't know, just like a drama person. And so I was in my drama club at high school and we used to go around to these competitions throughout the state to like, I don't know, just decide, tell, have them tell us how good we were. And I thought I was terrific. Like I really thought I was like a Dakota Fanning, you know right, what I mean? Right, like a right. child prodigy of the stage. This and an intense thing. It really was. Like we took it very seriously. We had jackets like we did have sort of like letterman jackets. you think it could get cooler <laughs> i know except for like they weren't honored like no one thought they were any cool but we did have like letterman kind of yeah, like yeah, it was, yeah. so that was exciting um and we thought a lot of ourselves and i particularly like football jackets. yes and i part- in particular thought a lot of myself i really thought and like and i didn't think i was a comedy actress i thought i was drama like i thought so did i yeah it's- like i really thought <laughs> And that was the only comic thing about no, it. No, exactly. Yeah. It was like I was doing like things from the Holocaust. My my piece. Well, we know. My, I'm sure all you know, your pieces love, are from the, the love started early, I guess. But of uh, World War II things. But I used to do this piece from like I never saw another butterfly. <laughs> like that was my, <laughs> that was my big piece. When I auditioned for NYU, I went in and, and you know you have to have a dramatic model. Oh yeah, I did one for my. I don't know if you remember a little play called Night Mother. Yeah, <laughs> in which, okay, but I was you not mean a girl who's daughter, about to commit suicide, not playing the daughter who's in the other room about to kill herself playing the mother who hears an uh, elder mother who hears a gunshot as her daughter and, and the guy goes oh 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 night mother I was like Casey that's really funny because I also played an older woman in my I did Torch Song trilogy as the mother <laughs> A, a part played by Anne Bancroft in her older years. <laughs> Seventeen so, years old, trying those to. Those are be, the parts I've always related to, too. and this brings us right back to Housewives because yes. I've been taking more magazine off the shelves in the airport for like twenty years. Yeah, like I just want to know about the life of an older. Gal. I was always watching Designing Women, Golden Girls. Like these were my stories, and I'll tell you, Danielle. Oh, you but, know, wait, sorry, I just uh, thought of one other funny thing. I went to the NYU to the musical theater like segment uh-huh. one summer and it was not for the people that actually got into musical theater. It was like, you could just sign up and I was like, I guess we'll give you a class. <laughs> it's like intramural. Yeah, totally. And, but even still people were amazing. Wow. Like people were getting plucked out of that and like doing cats. And so I was like, wait a minute, people are kind of going to Broadway. <laughs> and so I get up with like this famous, this is no one's going to even know who this woman is, but she's wonderful, wonderful teacher and performer in New York named Alex Corey. Uh-huh. And I get up to sing what I, I thought was just a young ingenue song, uh-huh. a little song that Elaine Stritch made popular called <laughs> I'm Still Here. I know that one. She's like, you're 17. <laughs> she goes, sit down, bring in another one. The next week I chose Send in the Clown. Oh, no, another one. That was like Gwen Verdon. <laughs> Like she all goes, elderly women at the mad. end of their lives. And that's who I relate to and that's what I feel Me like. Too. And she goes, Sit down. She's like, you are not ready to sing Send in the Cloud. The next week, did you bring in Castle on a Cloud? <laughs> <laughs> next like week, I brought in like Tomorrow. Five. Yes. Oh, well, Danielle. I just, I chose to sing at one of these thespian competitions. Yes. Now, I did not know I wasn't a singer until very late in life. Too late for I'm my so own sorry. good. And that, and I didn't know it here. And like, and so 
I went to these thespian competitions and I sang this song called I Don't Know How to Love Him from Jesus Christ Superstar. Great song. Great song. Mary Magdalene, I believe, sings I'd it. I'd love to hear your rendition. Well, it, I thought people did. And so I sang, I sang my heart out and I remember doing a good job. In my it mind, felt good. it felt good. I was like, I'm on my way. Nailed like, it. Like Broadway, here I come. Will I be Eponine? Probably. Right. Like this is the performance of a lifetime. And if anything, you're kicking around with these losers. Yeah, exactly. You, really. Like they're holding me back. But once I hit New York, it's all going to start. I know the feeling. Yes. And so... I found the reviews like so you go to these thespian competitions and you get your reviews and I had read these in high school but I really read them with new eyes <laughs> they didn't quite sink in it didn't sink in because I still thought I was a singer because this is like 10th grade and I didn't realize it till much later that I wasn't like I was still auditioning for oh, I anything like to your, 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 your song. yes my, I'm not saying that I couldn't again like pull a brook shields and play like Rizzo on Broadway if right. I was a big enough star and I could speak sing it yes sure under the right circumstances <laughs> <laughs> circumstances I am a Broadway singer got it but the reviews I read these reviews through my my now aged eyes my Elaine Stritch aged eyes and here were some of them guys okay. and they are okay here's what one person I think her name is Cheryl has to say and these were like people in their 20s 30s judging us okay strangers we did not know here's one relax and become still before you start <laughs> <laughs> listen to your singing voice let it sing, not shout. <laughs> and listen to your singing voice is almost just like, have you heard? Yeah, what have you just heard, heard what we're hear? hearing? And then take control of your singing. <laughs> That's hard to do, though. Now here's another one. Another person, Kim, uh, an adult. Wait, that was all one person. That was all one person. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that this was kind is of another group. person. No, 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 no. That was just one. Okay. But it's a popular opinion. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this woman says to me, new woman. <clears throat> And again, this is an adult speaking to a child. Yeah. Your energy level is very high. <laughs> she's, oh, she's angry about that. <laughs> yes. There are times when you need to cool it. This is, <laughs> there are times when you need to cool it. This is one of them. <laughs> Let me see that. <laughs> and then, though, she, she has, there's a silver lining. You held my attention. <laughs> Wait, I'm showing Casey. Oh my God. I mean, it's tough to hear. For, but you know what? I have to give myself the 16 year old Danielle. You, know, you highlighted some of these, and yet I found something unhighlighted. <laughs> what did it say? Are you having voice lessons? Question mark. <laughs> the answer was and yes. Another one be very careful not to push your chords, <laughs> or else you won't have a singing voice for long. Well, she was right. Oh. I know. It's tough. Wait, there's more. There's another one. Read the highlighted parts of the next page. Okay, now this comes from Edward. <laughs> Edward, what does Edward have to say? Some nice vocal qualities at moments here. <laughs> Don't abuse your throat. <laughs> Guys, what did I sound like? Some moments of good character. <laughs> Don't move just to be moving. <laughs> What were you doing up there? Wandering the stage, screaming. <laughs> Wandering and screaming. You know what, Danielle? Know. <laughs> but I have to give it to myself. And I'm going to give it to myself. The fact that this did not deter me yeah. speaks to a fire in a young girl's belly. <laughs> it does. And I'm so glad that our sh it, it, part of the conceit of our show mm -hmm. and the live shows is that we force people to listen to, to listen our to voices. Us. There's no <laughs> Kate and Sheila and whoever no, these and Edwards. They can't say... Stay still. Stop moving. And the audience might feel that way. And some of them have given feedback. But yes, you know what? but I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what comes with maturity. And in the words of Elaine Stritch, I'm still here. <laughs> wow. Brought it back around case. So that was interesting to read these through new Thanks perspectives. That, so guys, I'm going to frame these, put them on the wall. Wow. So it was tough, but I, they're here. I love that as when you were younger, that, that just rolled right it just off. Roll, I, and guess what? My memory is that yeah. I killed it. And I'm glad. So I'm so glad I didn't take it in. And that's so glad you weren't self-actualized at that time. <laughs> yes. Young people who've been through traumatic things, you can forget. Mm, mm, and that's good to know. Mm. <laughs> Case, what have you been up to? Oh, God. It's been a hard week or so, three yeah. weeks. <laughs> I decided to try to... We, I, I, I've shared this mm -hmm. before, I believe. I don't even know why I'm sharing this. I'm, I'm glad but, you are. Uh, I had some uh, tough postpartum, mm -hmm. and so I got on Zoloft. And so I thought 
you know, it's been a year and a half. I'm like, I think it's time for me to, you know, lay down my sword. And okay. I think I can go it alone and I'm good. And I don't really have like a history of depression, uh, thankfully. So I thought, you know, I'm just going <laughs> to wean off. I weaned off. And let's just say we learned what lies beneath. <laughs> no, Casey, what lies Ooh. beneath? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Is it dark? Ooh. What does God, she look like? She's a terror. <laughs> it was so terrible. Guys, it was the worst week. I at points just wearing this sad gray hat that was like a skew and a robe. Oh. And like I was with my son, but then uh, it was bad. Oh, Casey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. But I kept thinking, you know, I'm withdrawing. So these are just the symptoms of withdrawal. And uh-huh. finally, like got a hold of my doctor and she's like, I fear this is a relapse. And I was oh. like, oh, OK. But I didn't even feel that bad before I got off. So I feel disappointed and that I had to go back on. But the minute <laughs> she suggested it, I was like rummaging through the calendars for it. She's like, you know what? I think you should. I was like, already on it, lady. Like, we're dosed up and ready to go. You seem terrific. You look better. You look I, brighter. I just, it was too, it wasn't the time. She kept saying this. I, it's just maybe not the time. Yeah. But when I was thinking in my head, like, Will there ever be the time? But you know what? There doesn't need to be that. Medical science has made it so it doesn't have to be the time. How do you mean? Meaning you never have to get off of Zoloft, and I think that that's in gen- nobody. Yeah. We can we can if we're not okay, we can be okay, and that's medicine. Thanks, Danielle. <laughs> that's medicine. I didn't know you knew what medicine was. I'm just saying. Look, I'm not a doctor and I'm yeah. not a singer, but I can still I still know some things. <laughs> <laughs> you have a terrible stage presence. And, and I have not stopped moving since I sat down. <laughs> well, I appreciate and I'm that. moving just to move. I appreciate that. No, I, I, you know what? It's helped me so much. I'm actually just so grateful. Mm-hmm. And I think it was kind of, you what know. What are we proving? Like, yeah, you know I, mean? like, I think what that's kind proving? of what I came to of just like, you know what? I need this. And it just lifts me up. I don't know why I'm talking about this. This I, is not. I, I think that this is important. I, I'm sure. Well, my husband was like, you know, can you go take a walk? And these are all great suggestions. And, you know, you hear them from people like, try to take a walk, try to. And I thought, you know, I can't even wrap my head around that. And then literally once I kind of got back on this, I was like, oh, I'm just lifted slightly enough off the bottom. Like, I'm such a porous person. Like, I feel everything gets me. I just needed a little, sh- frankly, a shield from my I own know, emotions. I know. And I'm so glad. And that- then today I was like, oh, great. I feel good enough to go to yoga. And I'm not certainly not bouncing off the wall, <laughs> but I, I feel good. And I, I think I it's important. Know. And I think that our listeners will like to hear this too, because I'm oh. sure so many people, including myself have been through uh, some dark times. Yeah. That's when I'm realizing older, like everyone's been through some fucking stuff. Like everyone you meet, it, it's just as we get we're older, all the walking wounded. I know everyone has, uh, it's just interesting how you'll be like, Oh, that person's in there. You're like, wow, they've really been through it. Or it's just so interesting. It is. It's true. And so I think I'm glad you spoke to this. Thank you. I well, part don't of my know how oh god, <laughs> sorry. Sending the cloud, isn't it rich? Okay, it sounds beautiful um, now. Now what? you've lived. Now I've lived. I've lived enough. I think I could. Sing you could sing the it now. now. I need to go off the Zoloft to access tears, but yeah. I think I could do it. I think you could too. Now, what else have you been up to? Well, it, it, you know, New Year's. I have been trying to. You know, I'm on such a wellness kick as yes, always. <laughs> the, 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 I have so many healers. As I have been for years. Yeah. <laughs> I have more healers than uh-huh. one could even imagine or know. But one person I did kind of actually want to shout out because it's so funny. I was talking to her today. So, you know, our astrologer, Heidi Rose Robbins. Uh, yes, I know I her have well. been meaning to tell our listeners this and I forget every week and I'm so, so excited. She told me something eerie. What? Eerie. What? She's like, she called me. She's like, Casey, I need to tell you something. And, and I was like, <laughs> so well, of course, I'm sure tomorrow's my last day. She <laughs> looked in the stars. She's like, Zoe left or no, yeah, sweetie. And maybe do things you like today. You done. <laughs> so she's like, it's the weirdest thing, Casey. She's like, you know, you and Danielle are so generous. She's such, she's the best. I she's love you were so generous to even mention me. And so many of your listeners have called and gotten readings. Oh, that touches me. Mm -hmm. She said, these are strong women. She goes, they all have Scorpio all over their charts. Wow. It was so weird. I'm a Scorpio Uh and you have Scorpio in your chart. Yes, I have Scorpio in my chart. And she just said, it's eerie, Casey. She's like, I'm not just talking about a little. She's like, the people that that listen to you guys, she's (gasps) like, they are of like minds. And I know you might think, well, oh, we all listen to certain things. like, And so we have some commonality or similarities. She was like, Casey, these people's charts are covered in Scorpio. And it was just so interesting, wow. I thought. So many strong women. Yeah. That's what it is. That's a, 
Well, I Scorpios. Think and so to that, actually, I will say people will love hearing my Zoloft story because <laughs> if you have Scorpio, you've been, you, you may know. suffer. <laughs> Um, but another person I've worked with for 10 years uh, with kind of like weight and weight loss. And I'm such a huge believer that weight loss is so much cheaper than just like a diet or whatever. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, we all eat for so many different reasons, but if you're just looking for a brass tacks, uh, like savior of a nutritionist and she is a nutritionist to the stars, but she has a program that she wanted me to tell listeners about. This is not an ad. Um, Mm -hmm. this is Heather Bauer who has been my nutritionist for years and years and years. And she's been with me through thick and thin. And I do mean that. (laughs) Um, Like when I got pregnant, she was like, Casey, don't eat too much. And then I was like, call you in nine months. Um, (laughs) She is the best. And so she has, you should try. I would love to. My husband's uh, talked Mm -hmm. to her. She's amazing. And she's so smart. And she knows every trick in the book. And she really knows how to like, let you stick with diets. And Mm -hmm. she listens to what like your specific issues are. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for someone to can to dive into like, kind of my food issues. I'd really 100% she will. Mm -hmm. But she'll also if you're pregnant, or if you have gluten issues, or she's so so personalized. So I'm just gonna read a really quick thing because she's start launching this new program called Mm -hmm. the food fix. And of course, people can just have private sessions with her. She's in New York. So I Mm -hmm. do it over the phone. And she'll hook up a scale, uh, some type of online scale Danielle I don't really? know how do we do that God but these two can't. grandmas are like do we stand on our computer <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny Danielle <laughs> oh my god well Heather Bauer she has a new thing it's called the food fix and she says are you tired of all the diet gimmicks out there yes I am she's like are you in need of a food fix eating well and losing weight should not be difficult or frustrating well Ooh, it has been for yes. a lot of us she says you just need the right guidance to follow that's why she's so excited to offer an exclusive healthy healthy eating and weight loss program and it's available online now guys I know you're thinking why are you doing an ad this is truly not an ad this is no. someone I've worked with forever who is the light of my dieting mm-hmm. world and she's a beacon and she's helped me so much and she understands everything. So basically she has over two decades of experience. She's worked with thousands of clients and the food fix she says is not difficult and it works. Most diets fail because they ask you to make unrealistic changes that are not sustainable. And in many cases are just plain unhealthy. And in the plan, you get 28 days worth of meal options, 50 healthy recipes, over a hundred approved items to choose from on your next trip to the grocery store and so much more. The food fix is a do it yourself version. So this is if you don't want to spend as much as it would be yeah. to have a private session with her and it comes and then there's other other options that come with 28 days of assistance and help from Heather. So the program start at $97 and for more information, you can go to foodfix.me and use code. She made a little code for us. Aww. Bitch sesh for 25% off. And thanks everyone for letting me do that. This is just someone who's been in my life. And no, so you've talked about her forever. Wonderful. Been, you really have been. Um, and you know, it's the new year. So I thought maybe people might be interested in, you know, that. that's great. Oh. And, um, as Wait. far from that, the other thing I would like to recommend is the Menendez Brothers. <laughs> uh, Has it started? Started and ended. It's well, how on did ABC. I miss it? And I'm sorry to follow Heather with the Menendez Brothers, but... <laughs> I think that was a beautiful transition. What a gorgeous transition. <laughs> cutting out weight, cutting up your parents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> no carbs, no mommy and daddy. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Just settle on in. There is a key detail in this thing that I did not remember. Granted, we were young when this happened, but mm-hmm. they alleged that their father was is sleeping with both of them, having sex with both brothers. Jesus. And, and the father's a monster, that's clear. Yeah. But that neither brother knew. And it, there's if, if, if that is what happened, and who knows, you know? Mm-hmm. But if that is what happened, I can see how what they claim is that the night that it happened, they found out that the other one was also being abused by the father. And I can see how you're kind of suffering in silence for yourself. Yeah. But when you see your sibling suffering and then they claim that the they approached the mom and she knew the whole time. Wow. So I'm like, yeah, the yeah. dad deserved to, to die, die, unfortunately. And that's if that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. That's just I, my gut reaction. If that's what happened, there was a piece of me that was kind of like, oh, I'm understanding this. And everyone's like, oh, they're brats. Oh, they're I don't know if that's what was going on it's there. I will say both of them, I believe, are happily married now. They're both in jail, Danielle. Yeah, but happily married. No. Yes. You don't think that the minute those those boys went into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess if like the making a murderer guy. Is in yeah, there. he's doing fine. They're all getting puss. <laughs> like, right. They're all doing fine. Really? Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, they're both married, I believe. Well, they're gorgeous guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, what are we doing here? Gorgeous, innocent. I mean, not innocent, but like. Gorgeous. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Guys. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Gorgeous. Who knows? Guys. Who knows, guys? And but they just sort of a, a marriage behind bars. Other documentary, and then this is the last thing I'm Please? gonna say is the uh I'm sure everyone's watching this on HBO, the Carrie Fisher, Debbie Reynolds, <gasps> I've Bright I've, Lights. <laughs> I have DVR'd it and I have not watched it yet, but I is it has it been on yet? Yes, it just came out. It's okay. so wonderful. Oh, Danielle. I, lo- I, I still cry today on my Broadway channel, as I listen to, as everyone now probably realizes, because I am not a Broadway singer, but should have been. Um, but I think it's big of us that we remain fans. Yes, Of exactly. others who were able who to were achieve. able to get past the thespian competition and make it to the real world. But um, but I heard singing in the rain today, and I mm. started crying, bawling in my car. Now, there might be some other stuff going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that said, bawling in my car. I get it. I mean, Debbie Reynolds has a quote, and this relates to your thespian competition, which made me laugh so hard. (laughs) She says, uh, Carrie Fisher says about her mom, she goes, you know, the biggest disappointment in my mom's life, I disappointed her the most. She goes, it wasn't the drugs, it wasn't the alcohol, it's because I never did a cabaret act. (laughs) (laughs) They cut to Debbie crying, she goes, she has a beautiful voice. I was like, I love these people. I love those two. And I'm, you know what, I'm going to say something. I'm glad they died together. Absolutely. It, I, I make, it gave me warmth in a time of cold. Like I'm glad they weren't alone. In the back, these back-to-back conversations, we talked about two sets of people that I'm glad died together for <laughs> very different reasons. Very different reasons. But that's what this podcast is. We can go bing to bang to bong. <laughs> like we can hit them all. And we're going to take a break in a second. But I also wanted to tell people about our upcoming live show at Largo in Los Angeles, Wednesday, January 25th at 830. Some special guests. It's going to be really fun. I'm very excited about that one. So get your ticks, guys. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. He's here. (sighs) You guys, I'm so excited about this guest, and I know you are, too. (laughs) He's here. (laughs) I'm so excited. He's in the nook, and I am, I don't know, I'm giddy. I'm a little giddy. I know. I tried to blow dry my bangs, (laughs) and the back of my hair is wet. Yeah. I almost put on a lipstick, because I knew you were coming, but then I was like, is it trying too hard? I know. Well, my (laughs) husband was like putting our sun down, and I was like, I don't have any jeans. (laughs) He's like, what? I was like, Michael. I know my husband too is is excited because he's a Howard fan too. Oh, okay, okay. So so as is my husband. Mm-hmm. Guys, our next guest on the show, our only guest, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm should be like the I'm only guest hosting a full talk show. Should be our only guest that we've ever had is an amazing actor. I watched you for so long, loved you always. I'm like, I love that guy. He's so mm-hmm. talented. I know. Me too. I. First came to know you, I think, in Mighty Aphrodite. Oh, and I was like, best. this guy, who is he? And then you've given us comic turns and friends. And mm-hmm. you've been in so many movies. Mm-hmm. Beautiful girls. You were hilarious. And wow. then you took us, you took a turn mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and became a Housewives fan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was an interesting turn. But one, your most respectable performance, I would say. Yes. The one I think you should with Tony's, Emmys, Nobel Peace Prize. Yes. <laughs> Without further ado, please. please welcome. Michael Rappaport. How you doing? Hello. I'm glad to be here. We're so excited. So happy to have you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me. I'm a fan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah. Wow, guys. My, 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 my wife, I just got married. Oh, congrats. congratulations. Yeah. So, but my girl before, you know, she, uh, she actually, she got me into Housewives and um, uh, by default, but, 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 but in regards to you, we could talk about that later, but in regards to you guys, it was also by default because I, as much as I love the housewives and as much as I love to talk about the housewives, you know, there's gotta be a, there's gotta be a cutoff point. Is yeah. there? Gotta have Does some, there? I, it, there's gotta be. It yeah. could just could keep going, but especially when it's really good and salacious and you're in the middle of a good storyline. But she was in, into your, she was listening to your podcast in bed and she just kept laughing. Kept, I was like, what are you laughing at? She's just, these girls, these crazy girls are talking about. <laughs> Housewives. I was like, oh shit, let me listen, you know, because I was like, you know, just to sort of hear. And then I started listening, you know, to to your podcast, and and lo and behold, here I am. Well, she sounds like a visionary. Yeah. <laughs> she sounds very smart, and you made yes. a good choice. Yes, yes, so yes. she got you into it. Were, were you watching with her to begin with, or were you just kind of passing by? I was passing by. The, the way I, I got into it um, is because I'm a football fan, and and Sundays, <laughs> <laughs> Sundays. Um, I remember, like, you know, for years, you know, I don't know what years, you know, one, two years. See, it, it just, you know, it, 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 it's always going on, right? The shows yeah. are always it going on. It never isn't Right. Mm-hmm. So, but I remember during a specific football season, this must, I don't know, four years ago, on a Sunday, um, 
the the Sunday night game wasn't going my way. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go upstairs. And Sunday night, you know, was divvy. Like, if you want to watch football, you watch football downstairs. <laughs> but if, you know, I'm watching, I, I think it was New York. Yeah. Yes. Or that maybe it was right. Atlanta. Um, Both are great. I think it was New York, actually. It was New York because that was my first love. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, you know, I was just like, uh, you know, I'm coming up here, I'm watching, so I'm not going to try to, you know, fuck around with TV, but I was like, wait, who, who is this girl? Like, what, what's her deal? And what's, wait, what is, is this serious? It's like, is this for real? Like, are they for real? You know, and like, I just was fascinated by the behavior and, 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 and the women of New York. And I was just, because I'm from Manhattan and I'm from the Upper East Side of Manhattan. And oh, I would never know you're from Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm from right, I'm from right where um, uh, they, they all talk about, like, I'm, I'm, I'm from the Upper East. Side, Have you been to Boutique? I haven't been to Boutique, okay. but I was just at the, um, what's the whole, I was just at the Regency. <laughs> with our, Tom there? Tom wasn't there, but I was in the hotel and I, and I was there on a meeting like during the middle of the day and I was like, is this is how Regency, like, it's like and I was, it sounded familiar and I was like, I, I go to the, uh, the, the, um, the uh, the guest services. I was like, "Yo, is this is this the the, the hotel from from Real Housewives of New York?" <laughs> you went up and, and they asked. were like, "Yes, yes," and it's and it was, it's right over there. They knew exactly where. Like, and did they seem annoyed to answer? No, they knew why I was asking and what I was asking for, and they pointed to the corner of the bar. Oh, I was like, "Oh, no. no, yeah, they they knew. Like, there people must come in there all the time, like and, a landmark." Yeah, they they knew exactly what I was asking for. So this is just. About a month ago. When we go, we should make a pilgrimage. We really oh, yeah, yeah. You got to go. You got to go and you got to kiss each other at the corner with yeah. Tom. So anyway, so so <laughs> that just happened. But 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 from just sort of watching it, I was like, I just instantly like was fascinated by it. And I had been watching reality shows my whole life, you know, on and off, like starting with the real world, mm -hmm. you know, on MTV with As the first I. season. Right. Yes. But I, I was always like, this is bullshit, whatever. But I just you know, fell into it and, and, and got, you know, sort of engulfed in it and, and, and intertwined in their storylines. And, and then New York led to Atlanta and then Atlanta led to Jersey, which was a whole epiphany. <laughs> and, and I might be out of the orders, but you know, those are my, like my big three, New York, Atlanta and Jersey are like the ones where I was like really, in, 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 you know, like into it. Yeah. And then, you know, then I just became like a, a like a real fan. And now and, will you watch without your wife? I will watch without my wife when I have to, like if I'm away. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like doing it because I like to talk to somebody about it. And then as a grown man, like watching the housewives alone, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're like, you could, you could start, you know, questioning just like, what the fuck is like, you can read a book, like do something <laughs> like, cause the involvement with another person is yeah. with so much fun. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I actually felt like I was cheating tonight. Cause I, I told her, I said, you know, when I was coming up to her, she should have come. She yes, have come. We would have loved yeah, to have but, her. You know, but I don't ever, but she, but you know, this is the first time I've ever watched it with other person other than her. Uh -huh. Um, another show so so it was no nothing not bad but so so it was cool so um so yeah that that's what we do and, and it's it's really like it, it, out of all the 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 highfalutin you know mad men and the and the and the uh what was the other one breaking, Break, Bad. breaking bads yeah. and all them this is up there with the must watch tvs yes. that we have like it's a, a i sure believe with the sopranos thing. yes it's up there. I, it went a good episodes of the a good Ugh. episode of the housewives is as good <gasps> as any good tv you're like the speaking my language my berkshires period in, i mean the but that could go down and tell the, the all well, of that or, or florida when absolutely um how could you do this to me question mark yes <laughs> or or what we just watched which was lisa rinna uh, wielding that kind of Let's Glass. talk Fuck about the Game your of Thrones. Rent. I mean, when you yeah. got, you know, so so I I, I think that you know, it, like to me, like I've literally applauded the television, <laughs> like after an episode, like yeah, because I don't know who the guy is, but yeah. in his imagination, when he was inventing the television, it was made for entertainment, mm -hmm. and the Housewives, when it's at its best, it's pure entertainment, and it's to me, it, there's just so many levels of, of wow. why I'm fascinated by. It. So I I just think it's and we've got time. Oh yeah. <laughs> So I just I love it. So I'm I'm a real fan. You are. Now you say I never, you love I never to watch saw it coming. Like I, I I was like how it was could fucking you? retarded. Who would thought right? <laughs> how could you have seen this coming right. for you? I don't think I know. anyone when would you have. saw yourself as a teenager and you dreamed of what your life would be. Would it be alone in a hotel room watching <laughs> would middle aged women scream at each other? Right. Tea and right. a mint with women you don't know. <laughs> Talking, Talking about other women that I don't yeah, know. Exactly, but that's what life is. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but I am curious about why you latched onto it. Was it because uh, you know you are an actor and sometimes I think there is so much kind of theater to it, yeah, or that, that, uh, I, is it the social interaction? Action, how women relate it, it wasn't necessarily women it, but 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 I, I, like i'm working with the great 
Jennifer Jason Lee, oh, one of the best. Wow. Yes. And 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 wow. I don't know how we got on the conversation about Housewives. She doesn't watch him. And I was like, listen to me. You're an actress. You're a female. You it's a never ending mm -hmm. like inspiration. She's mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? I'm like, just just trust me. You're like she's asking me things, and I'll like tell her little things, but out of context and to me explaining, it's also embarrassing. Like I'm trying to explain to her. I was trying to explain to her <laughs> the greatness and brilliance of Sheree from, oh, from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Yes. And but I said, I said, just just do me a favor. I said, just trust me. Yeah. You will be so inspired as an actress and as a female. Like preach. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I love it. You, you know, one of the great reality show personalities and I don't know exactly what happened and she this was along the same time where I started getting into all all Bravo shit Ra uh, Rachel Zoe mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. she oh was fucking God. great yes she was fucked because I was literally like this is not is this a real person yeah, like she this, came correct she yeah. was out and and the husband and little um yes. what, what's the son, son Brad Bra oh no oh oh their, uh, their son no, Skyler little Skyler. sky sky little sky sky <laughs> So, so she was definitely a part of it, and then that show just disappeared. But, but Bethany, and 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 the, and the Joes on Jersey, yeah, and and Nene, you know, and the whole early Atlanta shit, where I was like, this is fucking. They fantastic. were your gateway drugs, yeah. gateway. And when the Gorgas and 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 the uh, and they all had that big family fight, yes. and like you're my sister, you're my brother, <laughs> you're a father, you're killing your father. I was like, this is. Eugene O'Neill or like it's it's as big as any Godfather shit yes. like this yeah. is high end drama and then he, they're talking in broken Italian they're bro bro I was like this I don't give a fuck what anyone says I put this shit up there with whatever you're watching on Sunday night fucking Game of Thrones yes whatever you're into agree so. it's Tennessee Williams but it's yes. also it's Mammoth real. yes it is I mean just Eugene O'Neill yes all of these things but it it's also real so it's, it mm -hmm. takes on this level of stakes that is just I agree. so and, and, and I, I'm caught Caught in them, I'm moved. I I've cried. I've cried. Have you cried? I I've have cried. cried many times. Oh when shit! When Phaedra brings her little kids, yeah, yeah that I was mean, tough. I cried with Phaedra and the that kids. That was tough. Have I ever cried? I don't think I've ever cried. I've definitely been moved. <laughs> I was definitely moved with the with 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 uh, with Teresa with the with the with the family stuff yeah. and the going to jail and yes. the going. Out. I, I never actually cried, and I'm a crier. Like I'll I'll yeah. cry like at at TV or movies and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I'll cry. It's never actually crying, but it definitely like, you know, shook my heart, like to watch that whole thing with the family. And what the fuck was I going to say? I can't remember. About what it was. being high drama, Jennifer Jason Lee. Yeah, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember. It was something in that, in that ballpark. I'll, I'll come back to it. And a friend of ours, also on a podcast who came, <clears throat> uh, Brian Safi, said something which also struck me. And I think you could say this too, which is just like, there have never been these strong roles of women on television please, like that are, that of are a certain age like, of a certain please. age that are they don't have to be likable please. they're not just there to serve their husband <laughs> that's please, a good point Danielle. not even close <laughs> yes not even close and and this is the sort of the the golden era for women in television yes. yeah. not even close right? to what these women on bravo are doing exactly oh here's what i was the gonna nuance say. The, the 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 thing about some people say it's fake let me tell you something <laughs> you cannot fake like you, yeah. you, you, these people make Marlon Brando and Meryl Streep look like amateurs. If you could fake that, <laughs> if you could fake, uh, 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 if you could fake Luann, put her on a fucking stage, and 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 she should be winning Oscar after Oscar. This is real. Yeah. This is real. Mm -hmm. What's my girl's name in New York? Um, the, Bethany. Not bad. She's my she's Sonya. My, no. Oh, Ramona. 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 Yeah. You can't. That's not a performance. No. You Who couldn't. Can do that. You couldn't. Meryl Streep wishes <laughs> she could she could be a Ramona. Wow. So she wishes she could pull off a Ramona. But yeah. like that's what I was saying. She'll Jennifer. never get there. Never. No. On her best day. No. And she just won a Lifetime Achievement Award. And has not achieved Ramona. Right. Mm -hmm. She had not even close to anything that Ramona's Agree. done. Agree. Or Dorinda. Oh. oh. She's fantastic. Dorinda. And Bethany is a fucking, she's a life changer. Yeah. Like I, Bethany is, is, is definitely like my, 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 your my, way in my one, because, cause I just think her whole story and, and I just think like, I respect good shit talkers and she's a really good shit talker. Yeah. Like she could, she could talk shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, I got to meet her and like, we <gasps> clicked cause she's yeah. a shit talker. Like I did, I did her radio show and we were like, blah, 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 blah. but I had, I knew I had to bring my, my shit with me because mm -hmm. she doesn't fuck around. Like she's going, blah, 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 blah. she could talk a lot of shit. So I like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, wow. it's, uh, it's, 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 it's definitely something I, I love and, 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 uh, you know, I have fun, I have fun with. And then, you know, when I did, um, watch what happens live. And I, I think that came about because I, I had, I was tweeting about an episode of something, 
Oh, so you took it to social media. You're, oh, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I, it's already on. Yeah. It when needs I'm watching, to be heard. You can't talk about it with yourself. You need to talk about yeah. it with the world, not just your wife. You, it, it's no. a thing. Yeah, it's These a conversation. These are feelings and thoughts. That and, uh, must get an out, have an yes. outlet. Attention <laughs> must be paid. Yes, absolutely. So I was tweeting about something, and then they got wind of it, and then... And then Andy like retweeted me or something like that. And, and then, and then they, you know, invited me on the show and it was with Ramona. And I think they were all just tripping out how much I knew about the show. And I was like, Oh shit. And I was with Ramona and like, she was like talking about like, you know, her self doubt. I was like, yo, you're Ramona. Like, you know, like get your shit like on the show. like, you should feel good about you're Ramona. Like you're Ramona. Meryl Streep can't play you. Yeah, you're like a one of a kind. And she was like, you're so sweet. And I was like, and then you know, I think she was flirting with was me. Was this was, after Mario had left her? Like, was she kind of like before? Feeling, right before. Wow. wow. This is before Mario left her. Mm-hmm. I think she had a book coming out. I can't remember exactly what the context of it was, but like, I just clicked doing it. And then, and then, I told Andy this. I was like, the world of housewives fans, and I was it was in New York when I did it, and I said I, I do live on the Upper East Side still when I'm in New York. It was like. It was like I just was like plopped down. Twenty years of of of, of acting, whatever. It was like none of that mattered. <laughs> like a whole new world had opened up to me, yeah. and 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 the people that would come up to me and talk to me with their little dogs and in line at the mm-hmm. coffee shop, or like it, it women just they were just like I don't know if they thought I was bullshitting or what, but they were just fascinated to talk yeah. about the show. It breaks down barriers. It, it breaks, breaks down, down colors lines, age lines. We can all talk housewives. Yeah, I mean, it, really it certainly opens your brought world the three up. of us together. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. of course, of course, of course. And now, did your wife? I'm curious. Now that you're so into it, is she a little bit like oh, all right? No, or no, is no, she's no, still no. full. Oh, no, she's how. full, full, full. I've never. Oh. At one time, I remember her like I think it was an episode of Atlanta, and and you know, she was like on the phone. While we were watching, she's like, I don't even like this episode. I was like, you're going to fucking watch the episode because you got me involved. I'm not watching this shit alone. Like, she was yeah. like, it's not that good of an episode. I don't give a shit what it is. Yeah. I'm not riding this fucking train by myself. I you get know that. I mean? so, and there is something about watching it alone that just is not satisfying. No. Like, no. It's. <sighs> you want to talk about I it. I wish my husband, it. for my birthday one year, he watched an episode with me. That was That's present. It was a beautiful present. He couldn't <laughs> believe that Kim Zolciak was not a man. He was. Kim Zolzia. Yeah, 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 he was yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. a man. I was like, mm. no, that is a beautiful woman. I mean, Michael, we have so many <laughs> questions that came in for you from our fans All who right. are huge fans of yours. We'll just throw them at you All before right. we start talking about the episodes. <clears throat> um, yeah, you want to go? Yeah, sure, sure. Are you Team Candy or Team Phaedra? Hmm. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. See, you know, I was asking you. We don't throw softballs here. No. No, I know. Yeah, that was, that was a tough question. <laughs> Shit. Right There's more, the bat, com- huh? more coming. It's hard to say because I, like, I was asking you guys before, and I still can't figure out exactly what their beef is with each other. And yeah. and 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 I feel like Unclear. it's just two friends that have gotten their feelings hurt. It wasn't like a specific incident, but I feel like it's getting uglier and uglier. And Portia is adding fuel to the fire with the lesbian accusations, and and Phaedra's sort of co-signing that. And and I've always had a soft spot for Candy because I think she's really sweet. Yeah. And 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 I always get defensive. Now they all have kids but like you know when you have kids and you have, I, I always like yo wh- wh- why are you doing that but I feel like as the seasons go on the stakes sort of get higher and you know the buttons get you know a little bit easier to push and, and people are quicker to do them so mm-hmm. to answer it's hard for me to say because I, I like both of them and I'm not clear what team I should be on gun to your head though pick one shit man <laughs> gun to my head who am I gonna pick Oh, I'll say Team Candy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll say Team I, Candy, I'm but I, again, it's, 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 it's very, very like... It's not you, black you, and white. Well, it's she's not. Well, she's fucking put a mask over my and put a gun to my head. I, I gotta I pick somebody. To. I, I know. Yeah, I I'm had to. Embarrassed. I feel threatened. Embarrassed my partner did that. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I but I felt the need. He wasn't saying yes or no, and I had to make... He had to, you got to, you got to make hard a decisions. statement, right? Okay, a lot of people saw you on Million Dollar Listing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, also another show I love. Yes. Did you watch those shows? Yes. Okay. Did These you, there were so many questions about this that this is We just tried to kind of lump them together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I'll you t- want to know basically everything, but were you really looking for a house? Please be honest. Yes. Were you playing it up for the cameras? Okay. And did you think the British realtor was a douche? All right. I actually was looking for a house and the way it came about is and I actually bought a house about a month after that. Really? Yeah. Two not even like probably two weeks. I was seriously looking. Okay. And my broker, you know, they're showing me houses and you know, you're hectic and you're stressed out and you know, I'm like, I got Friday. Let's go Friday. He's like, well, I'm going to show you this, 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 and this. And then the day before, he You're was like, like Atlanta's on. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was like, at 3.30, there's one on whatever street it was. 
but they're filming, uh, they're filming something. I was like, oh fuck, what are they filming? He's like, million dollar listen. I was like, oh shit, million dollar listen. I was like, I, I want to go. Like, I wanna- <laughs> And, and, and you're the greatest human. I know you are like, you say uh, yeah. yes. You're a national you're, treasure. You come from a place of yes, yeah. like Bethany. Which and is why. Shonda Rhimes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. So, so, so I was, so I, so, so here's what it was. M- my friend who actually played my son on my, sh- on a show a few years ago called the war at home. Mm-hmm. He was with me and he looks just like me. And, and, <laughs> and we were like, I, he was taking me to, to, to go see houses. I was like, let's just go in there and, see the house and we were fucking around but that's just how we fuck around and i was totally 150 percent looking at houses i was 150 percent asking the questions i was it was real but it was like i knew there was cameras there. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not you know an idiot but i to me i i told those people at, at million dollar listen like <laughs> you need to release the long the 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 the, the, the unedited version because <laughs> I swear to God, it's one of the funniest things I think we've, we, I've ever done. And they, they only use like a 90, 90 seconds or two minutes, whatever. Do you put but it on your audition reel? Like, I would send that like, shit in yeah. with anything because we were fucking around and, and we were, you know, arguing and they didn't know what the fuck. They didn't mm-hmm. know if it was my son. They didn't know if it was my assistant. And the broker, you know, because the broker kept saying, well, I would do this. And I was so deep into the house buying thing and I was so annoyed with brokers. Like, well, I would do that and I would do this. And I was just like, would you, are you going to fucking pay for that? Yeah. Like, what do you mean you're, you would do this? Like, who's paying? Like, of course, you'd want to do all this shit, yeah. but who the fuck's paying for it? So I, 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 I loved seeing it. I thought it was, a, it was very funny and, and I love doing it. And, you know, and I love, I, I love a million dollar listing New York actually more than Beverly Hills. Um, cause I think those guys are characters. Oh um, yeah. Frederick. Frederick. Frederick and co. Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel like that was kind of God's will that you were looking for a house that yeah. day and you got to basically walk onto the set of a reality show. It was and fantastic. you've already kind of are saying that like the acting on these shows is so amazing. I love that you as an actor basically got your chance. Yes. Me <laughs> you too. You got one of your favorite yes. roles. So I'm yes. happy for you. Well, you've done you. Woody Allen. Yes. You've yeah. done, I mean, you've done, you've worked with the best. Who cares about that? Let's talk about the million Let's dollar release the footage of the million dollar list. Release, Release the, the bravo. footage. Yeah. Release the footage. Bravo. Okay. Someone named Mary Delziner asks, All right. have any of the housewives ever put the moves on you? No one's ever put the moves on me. Like I said, you know, I mean, I think they're all sort of flirty. So when I met Ramona, it was kind of flirty, eyes batting. And when the first time I met Luann, it was, I think she, but I don't, this isn't me. I think it's just the way she is with men. They're all little Blanche Dubois. Yes. Like, oh, I'm yes. always the god of the like, yes. oh, man. But no one's <laughs> ever, never, like it wasn't ever anything. I'm not interested at all. Mm-hmm. I, I, I am not interested at in any of them at all. And I love them. Yeah. But, but so that's fair. There wasn't any, there wasn't any like, um, uh, overt, feelings. It wasn't any overt moves. And it was, it was more just like, you know, not even Bethany. No, 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 no. Towards, towards you. I mean, no, 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 no. Oh. Just like, just cool. Like we're like, yeah. you know, like we, we have a, like a, 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 a just, I think we have a, a sort of a shit talking New York understanding of each mm-hmm. other. Repartee. Yes. She gets me. I get her and I'm a fan. Hmm. Um, Ann Stevenson wants to know which of your celebrity celebrity friends, some from the rap world, are secret housewives watchers. Mike Tyson. Whoa! I, 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 what? You heard it here. He's gonna watch what happens live. I just ran into I guess Mike. You probably heard it on Watch What Happens. <laughs> no, no, no. But I saw him recently, and we had a. F- he could come on this show and talk to you We're straight good. up, <laughs> and have a full on conversation about like. You'd be like, "Are you fucking serious?" Like he, about about Atlanta, about New York, about all. He he's full on really? housewives, really? and he could talk to you. Like it's not just like, "Oh, I watch it." Sometimes like he could talk to you about the housewives. I had a conversation with he him. He can deep dive. Oh yeah, and and you know it's weird enough just talking to Mike, and then when you're I'll having say. a conversation, I'm having a conversation with Mike Tyson about houses. You're like, where the fuck? Where? Did, how did my? Like, this is life. This is the fantastic, uh, you know, special moments of life. That's how it. These are the people. moments. These yes, are the moments. When I look back, like in a defending your lifestyle way on my life, I want all of them to be me talking about housewives. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's it, right? moment, while your daughter's yes, like playing, like, uh, play, uh, uh, like she, mommy's watching her stories. <laughs> Right. Uh, a lot of viewers wanted to know your thoughts on Dorit from Beverly Hills. I can't stand Dorit. <laughs> I think that she's great for the show. Mm-hmm. This this season of the show. Which we do need to keep an eye on because just because we don't like people doesn't mean they don't serve the greater good. Yes, yes. totally. You you need Thank you can't you that that's the beauty of 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 the brilliance of the houses. You can't like all of them. No. You, you otherwise there's no show. 
There's no, there's no conflict. There's no, there's no dig. You know, you, you got to have the ones you like ones you don't like just like a, a soap opera. So, or a sports team. Exactly. Is that what they're called? Yes. <laughs> or the teams you don't like. It's the same. Mm-hmm. Exact thing. It brings mm-hmm. up the same feeling. So I can't stand her personality. The, 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 the fluctuating accents <laughs> and that whole thing with the underwear, I think is retarded Yeah, and fucking, but I think like her and PK are magic. Yeah. As yeah. far as like if with a show, like think about this season, if you eliminated PK and Doree, look what she's brought to our life. Oh, she's brought so much. I know. So, and, PK, and I don't want to forget that. Yeah. And PK, that sweaty little red faced alcoholic. He just, I just bloated. I see mayonnaise when I look yeah. at his face. Like I just see mayonnaise. And, and I was saying there was but like this, an off brand British mayonnaise, <laughs> like a, like a few weeks stale yeah, mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they don't refrigerate things over there. So and the top really has weird. been put yeah. on, but it hasn't been shut all the way. So it's got that gel on the yeah. top yeah, that that's weird, pk yes pk but um that that episode i was telling you that scene in the week before last yeah when they had a little house party <laughs> at dorit mm-hmm. yeah and and it was pk and and it was dorit <laughs> and and this is like week two of the of of, of the underwear thing and and and, <laughs> and, and we're in week six let's just right get, that's true. and who who's the, who's the, the other dude the other flunky elliot mintz uh f- a publicist that i looked up was oh, paris hilton's publicist and back in the day. john lennon's back in the right, day right i'm sure he wow. he seems like he's one of those dudes yeah. that's been around but like i was watching the show and i and i was like for a moment i was like I say, and I'm not trying to be funny, but I, I literally thought like I was watching like a National Geographic show. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, who are, like these are not people that I know. This yeah. is like watching like, uh, like wolves fight elephants and, you know, f- like, like a deep part of Africa that you can't pronounce. Like, I was like, what am I doing with myself? Like, where cameras have never gone. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, tribes crows. that have never crows. seen a new a yeah. human. Crows mixing with leopards. Had, I had a weird feel. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? And I have an aversion to British accents in general, <laughs> yeah. which is why I don't mess around too much with ladies of London. Mm. I just have a thing with it. But like with Dorit and her fluctuating accents and PK. It's putting you close. It's, I, it's too just, close like, for what's you. What's happening? Like, yeah. well, wait, how, there's got to be something I could do better than this scene i was like it, it, there's sometimes i'll hit like a like a low like a bottom out <laughs> yeah. you see you yourself know. you see yourself watching this and that's tough sometimes. that's what i was like like i had like an outer body thing like what is this <laughs> you know in beetlejuice the movie beetlejuice when they had that weird party with all the strange people from her art gallery yeah, yeah. that was that party yeah yes. like it was a strange mix of people. I'll say. And there was only about six people at a very no, long table. but long they, they table. had big personalities. <laughs> oh, oh they all spoke on. volume. Yeah. But what do you guys think of Dorit? You hate her. I listened to the last. I mean, you guys hate, you said you I fucking hate her. I don't care for Dorit. I don't care for her, but I can't stop looking at her. And Great I don't know what TV. that means. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I'm, I, I can't keep my eyes off of her. I'm a, I'm not attracted to her, like her looks, but I, 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 I find her to be entrancing. Mm-hmm. I think she really showed her cards this week a ton because she was kind of fancy trying to make everyone think she was like the cool girl that dresses well and all of this. And then when Eden came, she was so flustered. She was like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, I want to have fun. I want to fuck you. Like, it was yeah. so crazy. It was such a strange sight to see them by the pool sitting. She approached Eden. Yes. Like Eden had her all fucked up in the game. Yeah. yeah. And and that was weird. While a golden retriever brought a tennis ball <laughs> atop Eden's crotch, we yeah. watched basically Dorit proposition Eden. And, straight and up. Straight, that was the weirdest scene. It was very weird. And then like, you, but you go, this is why you need her on the show. She's out there. Yeah. She's way out there. Oh, and I love how much she had to drink. I appreciated that. Yeah, yeah, that she was still like she needed rosé, but she still wanted to know what the chardonnay was. So she was sort of like just double checking. fisting and yeah. But she, she, you can't skim over that scene. She went over like she first in her confessional. She talked about how she's sexy. First, she asked one of the girls, "Is she a lesbian?" Like kind of, she was asking Lisa Vanderpump about mm-hmm. her. Yeah, and then she went over to her and she was like, "I have a, you know, I think you're like attractive and like." These are you're sitting. What's going on here? Like she had to, like she had to get it out. And the yeah. way she lowered herself and then was sitting awkwardly on the yeah. side of the pool. And these are the scenes that I don't even know. And I don't mean to not give credit where it's due. I don't even know if Bravo knows what they have with these scenes. <laughs> no, in some I know, ways you can't predict that because they kept just like 
teasing the the scene of Lisa fighting with Kim. It's like, no, this, this is the scene yes. that was a little weird, yes. everyone. It was very yeah, weird. It was. And the dog, I thought, added a good element. Yes. <laughs> because it made it even stranger. Like, I love that I was like, what am I watching? And I love a scene where I'm going, I don't know what's happening, but I can't stop watching it. And, and that was that scene. Eden was very comfortable with it. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I think she's like, you know, she said, you know, like, I would take home Erica Jane because mm-hmm. she... Wouldn't she would she would fight back? Is that what she no, said? No, she, she wouldn't would keep. She wouldn't quit. She, she wouldn't, wouldn't quit. I was like, what the fuck does that I mean? Because I, I think Jerry would be like one second, like I'm tired. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, she said, and I quote, um, <laughs> "Erica wouldn't give up. Wouldn't give up." <laughs> Which is. Yeah. You know, something you want when well, you're... Well, I'm sure Eden's a tough nut to crack in the bedroom. Uh, I don't know. I, I Honestly, <laughs> I wouldn't want to even try to pick the nut up with Eden. I, I There's like, there's... I just... Oh, it's a time bomb, but I'm... <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I feel like Eden's been through some stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like Eden's seen a lot... I don't think lot. anyone to address a group of people and say, as sober women, this is how <laughs> we handle things. And, mm-hmm. and I appreciate that she seems very like it sounds like dedicated to her sobriety. And that's that's great. But there's something going on with her kind of Erica Jane to me has a poise that you were saying maybe she learned from Mr. Girardi. I'm sure she's always had it, but I bet you know, Mr. Girardi. <laughs> that's, we, we won't call yeah, him by yeah, his first name. Yeah, yeah. He's, that's it's, he's that's too informal. To no, but she's informal. got that real chill, like, you know, like I've been around mm-hmm. big time, powerful, rich. She Obviously, she didn't just get it from him, but I'm sure she picked up on like, yo, my husband is a fucking big time dude and he handles this shit you know, in a way, like she's very poised and relaxed. Yeah. And yeah. they're all talking about her vagina and who showed she's what. And she's just sitting there. there. If you didn't know what she was watching, I mean, she's so calm. You would almost think they weren't talking about her vagina. If people were talking about my vagina around me, I'd be like, <laughs> guys, my vagina. Like, yeah, yeah. I couldn't remain calm and you know, like just sitting there. And I feel still. like Eden kind of wants to have that, but there's demons behind them hills. <laughs> yes. And she's got a little scripture written all over her body. Yeah, she does. As I said to you guys, like it almost looked like a yearbook, like just like random, ah, like, ha, 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 ha. like like see you next summer. It. You said it looked like she had keep in touch written yeah. on right. her shoulder, and then she's got like little shit on, like yeah, it was she's got like a grocery list. Yeah, it was know. strange. the The location of all, I was like, what's happening here? Yeah, and that scene with her and Lisa at the restaurant was so strange where she gave her a crystal and Lisa's like, we went deep. Yeah, Uh I was like, I didn't see it. And she's like, thank you for that. And she's like, I see you. I value you. I was like, you haven't said any words. She's like, I hope you know I see you and value you. And and Eden's just like nodding with a blank expression. (laughs) It was very strange. Eden says, I honor you. And then there was the return of Kim. And she came in with a whimper. It was, you pointed out, Casey, that it was like, we could have used some music. Maybe sometimes they have like footsteps walking up and we're like, who is this going to be? Or just like turtle music. Like, yeah. (laughs) Normally they do her clown music, which they've laid off a bit this season. She's she's just come back from a, you know, she's, they're they're respecting her. You know, her, her, her road. Yeah, the editor's like, should I pull out Kim's theme? And they're like, <laughs> Let's pull it back. Yeah, Put it today. back in the box, not now. Kim's going to be a grandmother? Yes. Kim's going to be a grandmother. She sure is. I do believe Kim's a good mom. Yeah, I'm sure she is. I feel for Kim. And <clears throat> she's been kind of like sober. We've seen her sober so many times. And then I'm always thrown by how wacky she is in the testimonials. But then I, I really kind of accepted this time. Like, she's just wacky. She's like a zany mm-hmm. person. She's kind of a, a dum-dum, but I have a love for her. I think yeah. she got wet brain. Like, when you abuse, you know, your, your, your body and all that shit. No, I'm serious. Like, you know, there's ramifications. Yeah. Like, you know, when you talk to, like, sober uh, alcoholics or, you know, sober drug like addicts. crackhead Bob. That's an extreme. Yes. But yeah, it fuck you up, you know, that shit. Like, it, it fucks your disposition up. Like, you know, the way you see things and, you're like, there's a little bit of shake in there. It's uh-huh. like a little a snow globe. So I think she she has a little bit of wet brain. But she, she's always sweet and all that, so. Just a touch of wet brain. But Just then a little sometimes bit. she'll have moments of clarity that are shocking. Like, like she'll when she's... Went into the whole camera and said, I'm not wearing underwear. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I don't want to know that at all, Kim. <laughs> at all. I know, but those are the moments where you get like a peek under the hood and you're like, there's a person, there's a machine under there that works. But, but then but- when she started getting into that fight with Lisa, which Kim initiated. Yes, she, that is true. She put her foot into that ring. 
she gets so pink and there's so, so much rage going on from that childhood that just like comes up her throat. Like even when Lisa Rinna tried to really apologize to her, I was like, there's no Kim wants to be injured. That's her problem. Right. She's she comfortable. must be injured. That's her. That's her safe place. Yeah. And Kyle, when Kim goes at it, when Kim goes in, Kyle gets a look on her face that's like <laughs> she goes into the closet of her childhood you yeah. know what I mean she just is like where mommy's She's screaming like, oh, no, and Kim is drunk yeah yeah that's exactly <laughs> I like to go. I like to go. <laughs> and that's why she either runs like so you know right. as we saw like in where were they Amsterdam when she just like ran out like right. arms flailing yeah, she wasn't biting her nails she was like gnawing on her fingers yes like she goes somewhere else she has to it's very dysfunctional yeah and now, it all starts with big Kathy Yes, mom. but they keep saying Kyle's enabling Kim. But I, what more can she do? I mean, she. What more can she do? She's, she's a, she, It doesn't matter if your sister, best friend, wife, husband. Yeah. It's like she's got to take care of herself. She's a fucking grandmother to be. Yeah, she's gonna be g- a Grandma Kim. She needs to be able to take care of us. The joke's over, Kim. <laughs> There's no more stealing. There's no more shoplifting. There's no oh. more pills. No more. Like, no. you're going to be fucking grandma. You're going to go in there like you're going to go in a, you know, Target and steal, like, baby sunglasses for your granddaughter. not grand- the one by the airport. Yeah. And Don't that do was it to tough, yourself. Yeah. That was a tough moment when she still had the tag from the department the store. She took it off with one hand. Yeah. <laughs> she has done that before. Yeah, she had that down. It was like a person who could roll a joint with one hand. Like, there was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, like if you have that tag, it's like, oh shit, you got to bring it back. I yeah. got to bring it back. I'd be like, I bring it back, or I burn this drive. Yeah, <laughs> those are your options. Or I she throw knew. It away. She, she knew. knew. She was like picking a lock. She was like, what a little nothing. Right, she didn't bat a fucking eye at it, and her sister didn't either. She was like, oh, I know she can do it. But even the everyone sort of like, I I literally stopped breathing for a second when I saw that I was like, <gasps> she was like, no, oh, him. That's like, a stolen this? merchandise. That's a stolen merch. And she was literally so calm. Like, if I had seen one of those, I'd be like, oh, like having stolen or something I've been like oh no but she was like yeah this will be easy like she didn't yeah like you said she didn't bet I know how to get these off she said that I think Mm -hmm. wow (laughs) what do you make of Kyle I think she's she's chilled out I think she she seems pretty regular she seems like she's a good mom she seems pretty pretty cool now like you know, I know, you know, they, they, I think they've had their stuff where mm-hmm. like they would really go nuts. But in general, this year, I think she's been very clear, pretty straight. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you know, she's I, I don't think much in terms of like I don't have a, a strong opinion about her either way, because I think that she's on top of her shit. And what do you make of Lisa Rinna being so kind of involved in Kim's sobriety? Lisa Rinna is a trip to me. She's funny to me. Really? And, 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 and <laughs> as women, let me ask <laughs> you this. Is judgment on that really of mine? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I think she's great for the show. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I wanted to ask you guys, because I, this is a little bit, just a little bit spread out of my wheelhouse, is, is a couple of weeks ago she said that her hair was iconic. Mm-hmm. Now, I was like, did she do a shampoo commercial or something? Like, why is her hair iconic? And in, in, in Open Your Heart, without judgment, is her hair style iconic? Or is that just her? Because that doesn't, that's a very specific thing to say i mean casey and i disagree on this subject it is not iconic and i i my heart's not open though so i don't know what would happen <laughs> no, it if, isn't. if i did open it mm. now um you don't know me but i feel that that is the hairstyle i meant to have in general in general now w- w- <laughs> she was a what she was a soap opera actress she was on melrose and i think melrose place back in the day was she like a vixen she thinks I it's think iconic it. because she has never changed it but it's iconic to her right like she's never changed it's her it, look it's and like now she has look. a wig line with it <clears throat> and right and she and it's sort of it's iconic in that she is said like this is who I am and people give her shit for it all the time because the, she, that ha- she said the same hairdo yes yeah. and but it did really she do like 90s. a fancy a fancy hair oh god hair I'll, shampoo stop you, I'll stop you at fancy no <laughs> but you know what I mean like maybe she no. I mean like there was a Fabergé by no. Lisa like that didn't happen because she's I, I, done I, a Depends commercial right I saw that <laughs> in a 24 hour run I saw that too <laughs> I saw that too she made yo she said I, Harry doesn't have I'm to work ready I, I, me please, too give me that duster give me give me I'll Give me go. a motherfucking vacuum that could do some tricks. I'll get up there for 24, <laughs> 26 hours. Give me some hours. dangly cheap earrings. I'll sell the fuck out. Yeah, of no that. worries. Okay, she, before we switch off uh, Los Angeles, just any last thoughts on Erica Jane? On I love Erica Jane. I think she's cool. Yeah. Her music to me is 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 putrid. It's trash. <laughs> now I'm not gonna knock the hustle. I love her. Her personality is great. Her story yeah. is great. The music is garbage. Um, um it's fantastic that she's a 
you know, a woman in her 40s doing her thing. I celebrate the story. I celebrate the hustle. I celebrate all of it. Me personally, I'm not into that EDM, super duper, <laughs> you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like Molly, you know, gay, like, you know, I, I can't say the other word I was going to say. Cause it's the thing, but I'm just that whole, like, you know, like trunks, you know, like, you know, like I, that's just not my kind of music, but I, I really fuck with Erica Jane. Like I like, I like her story. I think she's sweet. I think she's genuine. I, I think like, I, I think her love with, what do you call him? Mr. 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 Gerardi. Mr. Gerardi. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you don't call him by his no. first name. No, not in this space. No, not I got you. I, I, if I said that you guys would be offended. Yeah, it's disrespectful. Okay. <laughs> but I think it's totally genuine. I think it's far out. Cause yeah. this fucking guy, this is an older guy. Yeah. Know, Are they you know sleeping what? together? I don't mean to be based. I think there's something sexy about him. I do. <clears throat> and I said this last week, there's something about him and I get what she sees in him. I, do. I, I, I get that. I get that what she sees in him in the beginning, but it's like older guys, the sex is going to slow down in general. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> but we're talking about my man is Mr. Girardi is how old is he? I'm going to say 80 if he's a dad. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you know, and for somebody, now I know it's her persona because Erica Jane and Erica, Erica, um, Girardi. Er, no, Erica Jane and Erica, um, what's her, her vixen name? Erica Jane. Erica Jane and Eric, yeah. Gir right, Erica mm -hmm. Girardi, uh, uh, are, are two different people. I get that. And I, I, it, I know it's totally genuine, but for someone who sort of exudes this sexuality, mm -hmm. I'm like, she, like who's hitting that? Yeah. Like I, I don't mean to disrespect, but like, no. you know, like, yeah. Because I don't think Mr. He's... Girardi's not tapping that ass. Yeah. The way she 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 Me. seems. Yeah. And I don't think Mr. Girardi wouldn't give up. Like I think he's got like ten good minutes in him. <laughs> Mr. Girardi's eighty. I know. So I'm not saying he does her right. I'm and not I'm not saying, saying... he's in, in, in the love and all that stuff. But like, yo, check this out. I'm not fucking Brad Pitt. I know I'm not fucking Brad Pitt. But like, yo, I know when I'm 80, I'm really not going to be Brad Pitt. <laughs> and like, you know, like she's like, she's laid up with him. You know, like I, my father's 83. Thank God he's a healthy dude. But like, you know, I got to sometimes I'm like, dad, let me clean your back. Like, let me, <laughs> let me hook you up. You know what I mean? Like, let me scrub you and Stop. shit like that. This is what happens when you're yes. older, dude. You know what I mean? So she's in the cut. With, 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 with Mr. Girardi, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's a price to pay and it's a good price, a hefty fucking price. Yeah. I mean, he get it's, it's Chagall's as we saw. Yes. Now I don't, I hope Mr. Girardi lives for 40 more years, mm -hmm. but it would be interesting if they, in, in 40 years, let's just say he lives 40 years, who Erica Jane's going to wind up with next. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, there's a part of us like, yo, I'm, I'm over here. Like I'm with fucking Mr. Girardi and like, you know, like I'm trying to fuck, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I mean, I hate to use that language around it's women. It's almost but like she had to like there's create a this alter ego to like get to, out, get at something yeah. that she's not something. getting. And she's having, like we see you next week, she's doing like a pillow party. You don't with, think he would be fine with her having. I don't think she would do that. I don't think he would she's be fine with that. And I, I, th I think that's what I'm saying. Like, so I'm, I'm teasing, but I, I don't think she's down with that. Mm -hmm. I think she's cool. And I think their love is genuine, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying at a certain, like, sort of like, you know, like I had a cold last week and my wife was looking at me like, what the fuck have I got myself into? <laughs> like, I was really sick and I could see her just being like, Jesus Christ. I gotta like, get out of this. Point, I gotta like, get out. You know, like I was like, go sleep in the other room. I don't want to wake you up again. I'm coughing. You know, and she's like, no, I'm gonna stay with you. I was like, listen, I get it. And that, that's just, you know, like a really bad, you know, Christmas uh, holiday season cold. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Girardi. <laughs> shit, man. I mean, what Snivel could take him down? <laughs> Yo, yeah. So, but I, I really do like her. I think she's great. I think she's great for the show. And I think you, you, there's a real genuineness about her. Were you guys saying that she's got spending issues or were you just making that up? No, we... Making it up, but... Is there rumors? <laughs> no, we don't hear from anyone but our own minds. No, we, we do hear... I heard from someone that she seems to, like, uh, that he gets really upset when she goes crazy with the spending. Because you have to admit, like, th how can that video expensive... Her sales aren't generating no. income to pay for no. that, right? No, 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 no. Record sales, no. But but they are more now from the show, and she tours. I'm sure it probably probably breaks even at least. She tours very randomly. Like it will but be she's like doing in private jets in San like, Diego, uh, right? And then she's um, not doing it for the money. And then Virginia Beach, like the, right. There's no rhyme or reason to yeah. her tour, so that's sort I guess of strange. I just have trouble wrapping my head around that not doing it for the money. And I love to perform with the best of them. We I'm have like, paid huh. to perform constantly. Oh but yeah. She Okay, she's yeah. not doing it for the money. No, okay. I, why would she, would she not need the money? She's living the high life and passing. He got her a Chagall like it was I a know. fucking like it was like a like a like a like a garbage pail cake. It was like something from Sweet Lady Jane's, like a cake. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was.
was like, just kidding. That's not even your, your real present. I know. Right? I was like, like, so you got her a Chagall and something? He got the sh- himself the Chagall. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. She, she okay. was like, he said Chagall. She's like looking up on that, like in a Chagall. Like, oh, it's so beautiful. My favorite artist, you know. But I like Erica Jane. No, me too. All right, How we're going to take one quick break and then come back with Mike Rapp report about Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, yes. We're back with Atlanta now. Any just opening thoughts, musings you want to share, Michael? About, about Atlanta? It, yeah. yeah. This season or in general? In general. Anything. I, I love Atlanta. I, I, I love, the reason why, like, you know, it's hard for me to say which one I like more, but like New York, Jersey, and Atlanta. I think also it's, it's, it's a vernacular, like mm-hmm. the language. Like, you know, like as much as I enjoy Beverly Hills, I, you know, it's, it's a different sort of woman, you know, like the New York women, the, the, the Dorinda's, the Bethany's, the Ramona's, you know, like I, 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 I've seen those type of women my whole life. The Jersey women, I've seen those type of women my whole life. The, the Atlanta women, I've seen these type of women my whole life. So I, I, the, the, the way they speak, how they speak, the attitude, you know, those are all the East coast shows, you know, like I get it. I love them. Um, I think that uh, uh, it, it's been it's been a fantastic season, Matt. I'm genuinely concerned about Matt. I feel like this is Kenya Moore's best season because I think she's she's loved her from the start, but now she's really vulnerable. More more vulnerable because I I've I've had a problem with her because I always felt like she was a bully and mean and and really just you know sort of like you know. Um, uh, um, pageantry, you know, that whole mm-hmm. thing. And also mean and like mm-hmm. a bully, you know, like, and I, and I totally understood why uh, Portia, like, you know, you, she provokes people. Yes, and she, she did it last year to Kim Fields, who I thought was there like sort of in the middle of a shitstorm. She's like pulling yeah, her chair Kim out. Kim Fields looked like a child lost <clears throat> in a typhoon. And I think it's <laughs> fucked up though that Kim Fields didn't come back because by the end she was like, bitch, da 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 yes. You know, like they broke her. <laughs> so, so, so in general, you know, I feel like Nini, uh, you know, it's always, uh, you know, you're always going to miss Nini because she's great. Um, but I think Sheree Do brings. Do you think Nini will ever come back? Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> She'll be back. The other way oh, with yeah. She, she's, she ain't going anywhere. There's no, not another Cirque du Soleil show she'll host. <laughs> there, there might be that and there might, There's you know. There's not a performance of Cinderella that needs her as the evil She'll be back. Queen. She'll be back. Yeah. She'll be back. I mean, the other day, this past. I'm episode you to that they cut to some old stripper footage mm-hmm. of her and i'm like you gotta come home Nina. <laughs> you gotta come, come home, home. You, gotta come home. home. you gotta come home Nina. so there's so, no place like home Nini. no so i love atlanta i love yeah. it they crack me up the, you know they're, uh, the f- they're so funny yeah. Phaedra is my favorite kind of character she talk about jennifer jason lee talk about a character oh. thank you phaedra thank you i mean <laughs> My sister-in-law turned me on to Phaedra like the first season. She's like, watch this woman. Yeah, she's far See out. See what she does. With the southern what shit. She sa- she's all things. She's and sexual. She, she's southern. She wears so many hats. She does wear a lot of hats. And she's and she, funny as fuck. And, she's funny. And I don't know if she's... I don't think she's telling the truth most of the time, but I don't care. Me neither. And that's care. her, that's her beauty. That's her genius. That's her strength. Yes, that's her street. <laughs> that's her genius. Mm-hmm. She's good. So, so I mean... Atlanta's very, very, very good. And then there was Sheree. She's back. And She's fucking back. Bob. And, oh, and Bob. Bob. Now, Bob's an ex-football player. Do you yes. remember him on the field? I, I remember him a little bit. I think he was a lineman. Like, he wasn't like a, like a you know, a, um, you know, like a star. He wasn't like, mm-hmm. a, you know, one of the, the, the guys who gets all the points and all that stuff. Um, so I, I, you know, I know he played, but I'm not like he wasn't like you know Le'Veon. We Bell always or, have like middling players married to housewives. It's but he never was a player like, though. But okay. he just would like he, the positional players, like the 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 the, the linemen aren't the guys that get the glory. Yeah, we don't re- we don't get a lot of star. Play- oh, Cordell, he was, was a star. star. Yes, he was a star. He was a star. Yeah, that was the only one. My husband was like, right, oh, I know he, him. No, he yeah. was he was no joke. <laughs> Cordell was a, was a real dude. Well, I love when Sheree went to parkour with Bob and just while they're sweating, oh, they're sweating and chatting. She just throws this away. It's a total throwaway. She's throw, total throwaway. She's like, I'm going to tell a book and one of the characters is based on you. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what? But yeah. then he was proud Bob of her. is fine with it. But Bob, at some point he did say that it, her book wouldn't cost a lot of money, I believe. Didn't he say like, how much are you going to charge for that? Yeah, and that but he was, was proud of her. Yeah. I was afraid Bob was going to hurt himself when he jumped off the thing trying to impress. He's he's an ex football. His shit's all beat up. I he's know. Like Mr. Dre and he's carrying. Yeah. yeah, he and he's carrying some weight. Yes, Bob. Yes, and so, that's that's it's it's just not it's too heavy for his body. And I feel I that. agree. Yeah, he's past his foot. He's not at his football prime. Yeah. 
Now, speaking of Sheree's yes. book, yes. yes, we found an excerpt. It's not out yet. It's not out oh, till the man. end of the month. I, I did some research. There are three different covers for this book. I don't feel like she needs to settle on one. That's just a marketing. I thought. love Sheree. I do. That she's like, I don't know. I'll throw out three and the people can pick. <laughs> like she just yeah. does not. Which Sheree like does that. not live by your rules. No. Or anyone's no. rules. No. She's but, got one of the best dead faces. Like uh, her face when she's arguing, like she looks at you like, I don't give a fuck about you. It's, it's, it's <laughs> she's good. Now the book is titled Wives, Fiancés, and Side Chicks of Hot Lana mm, by mm, Sheree mm. Whitfield. Yes. And I went, and on barnesandnoble.com, I found an excerpt. <laughs> How the mighty have fallen, Barnes and Noble. And like, we'd love for you and to read And we'd love for you to no read worries, this no excerpt, worries. This is a please. cold reading, people. Yes. I yes. feel like, you know, you guys could have, could have sent it to me. I could have really got behind I'm these sorry. words. It was so a sorry. fast, it was a fast, it was me just Googling. That's all right. That's all right. I'm going to do my best here. This is uh, Wives, Fiancés, and Side Chicks of Hot Lana by Sheree Whitfield. <laughs> Sasha stood in the living room of her new apartment located in what looked like to be a fairly decent neighborhood in Atlanta, Georgia. It wasn't the best. It wasn't the worst. But then again, she had never been to Atlanta a day in her life before this afternoon. So how would she know? (laughs) She'd have to feel the area out and determine if it met not only her needs, but her standards, which were by all means anything but below average. Keeping it 100. (laughs) They were actually higher than a normal person's. And Sasha had no qualms, nor more made apologies about having above average, having an above average criteria when it came to all things in life. You could just hear her say, yeah, so all this things is, in life. This, she's just talking and someone's writing. Yes, <laughs> yes, she's yes. Not she's, typing. No, no, she doesn't need no. to. That kind of, you, that kind of brilliance. And there's no second draft. This is just, uh, just why do you need a second draft? This is just coming talking. out of her. It's a direct line to God. <laughs> What some people were willing to settle for, she wouldn't think twice. That's just like she yes. wouldn't think twice. <clears throat> that didn't mean she felt she was better than everybody else, but trying to tell some of those so-called friends she, she, uh, she'd come across, but, but, but try telling that to some of the, the so-called friends she'd come across. Stuck up bitch, always acting like some white girl. Sasha, th- Sasha thinks she's better than everybody else. She lives one block from the hood, not in one of those Trump Towers. She thinks her shit don't stink because her nose too far up in the air to smell it. That's an exact quote. She <laughs> thinks her shit don't stink because her nose too far up in the air to smell it. <laughs> Talk about fucking Shakespeare. Poetry, poetry. Powerful. Poetry. It was nothing unusual. For Sasha to hear those comments made about her, not only from the mean from the mean girls back when she was in high school, but now she even heard them from grown ass women. I added the grown ass women. It just <laughs> okay. said grown women. Oh, okay. I feel like that's where she's. That could have been a yeah. grown ass yeah. woman. Yeah. Well, second draft. Second yes. draft. <laughs> Shaka shook it off. Sha- Sha- Sasha shook it off as pure jealousy. She always had an attitude that exuded confidence. It wasn't her fault. It it wasn't her fault. Hating ass hoes mistook. Let me get this right. This is the last thing. It wasn't her fault. Hating ass hoes must... Sorry. It wasn't her fault. Hating ass hoes mistook it for conceit. Wow! I'm Hating ass hoes mistook it for conceit. Yeah, you had to get it right. I didn't no. want to just do that anymore. No, you had I'm to get glad. it right. That was a beautiful cold Thank you. read. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate Thank you. that. No, we, I appreciate you guys, that. We have an actor in here that is doing... This type of material yes. for us, and yep. we can't. Although I think it was actually pretty good material. Yeah, yeah, I think well, so too. Like, and, and that I've was just a cool a lot of Imagine yeah. you get you sink your teeth in. You're an actress. Imagine yeah. sinking your fucking teeth into something Imagine like this. Imagine taking you know a couple weeks with that, living in that character. Yeah, Sasha. <laughs> Living and, and, and all the hating ass hoes she's dealing with on a oh, weekly basis. I could have played a hating ass hoe. I think I, in the movie version, I would like to play a part, a small part in this. She said it is based on real people from her life. I'm. She said some of it is real and some of it is not. Those women are gonna go nuts. <laughs> Can I tell you my favorite, please, please, Sheree moment of the year? Yeah. Please. You might not have caught it. It was early. Okay. And I can't remember the context. But she said, the shit made me laugh so fucking hard. In, in one of her uh, interviews, she was arguing with somebody and she said, hell to the nah, to the nah, nah, nah. Oh. That shit to I, me was church. It was fucking, well, I was like, I rewind. it up because it was so amazing and we had to rewind it. And it is an actual. It's a song. It's a song. We didn't know. We didn't oh. know. We didn't know a, a listener had alerted up because I just thought, oh, this is genius. This is a genius. And it's so, she was so Sheree. Yeah. So, so Sheree. So but there's turns, a song. There that's a the song. chorus. Not a re- like a YouTube song. Right, right. But she, she was referencing that. Yeah, she was. Yeah, so she, she covered 
the song. Yeah, the cover. <laughs> the cover. Sheree does the covers. The cover. I will say her cover was better than the original because we did post the original because I was like, what is this? I this honestly amazing. was going to look it up myself, but I was like, I don't want to know. I know. Like, no, I'm meant- sorry if I ruined it. It's like knowing there's Santa. That's Fuck. I mean, there, there isn't Santa. I didn't want to know the magic trick. I wanted to believe the rabbit just appeared. I sorry. felt like that when we asked you if you were really looking for a house, a million dollar listing. I was oh, like, you real? know what? I don't know if I want to ask. I this. just moved yeah. in. Totally moved in. Thank that God. That's the answer. Totally because if true. it went the other way, hmm, yeah, I would just keep watching and never think of it again. No, but I love that you were like, this was a moment where like, oh, we know. <laughs> that was one of my favorite moments that's ever been on television. Yeah. And I remember who shot JR. Okay. Yes. This was better. Yes. Guys, Peter is back with Club One, which I, I guess is an extension of Bar One in a different city. And I keep forgetting that it's back in a way, you know, like when someone you love dies and then every morning you wake up and you're like, <gasps> And you remember that they're gone. That's how I kind of feel. In, <laughs> go with me, guys. <laughs> that About like bar one and P, mm-hmm. that Peter has has a successful business now. Like I keep forgetting. Thank God. Did Cynthia yeah. bankroll bar one as well? I know she bankrolled club one. Yes. I, no, I, I didn't sense the, the anger yeah, from her. I, and I don't get the impression of her vested interests. Uh-huh. Yeah. So how does he have the money? He filed bankruptcy. Like he investors, was- you know, and he's on a show and you know, it's, it's like investors. I, I would so guess. Do you think now that you're saying that I'm, I'm wondering if he knew she was coming, do you think like when they were getting divorced, he was just like, you better bring the cameras to the opening of club one. Oh, for sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> for sure, for sure. But, 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 but I think, I think, you know, like, we, you know, we were talking before and I think I'm glad now, this one is called Club One, this new business? Yeah, I believe. I'm glad it's doing well. I'm glad Peter's, you know, like doing well. Uh, he, he looks like a broken man in some... He but does. But I don't think... It, but I, but don't, don't, don't take the broken... Peter, you know, he, he proposed uh, that maybe uh, uh, Cynthia come home with him that night. Yeah. She turned it down. And he didn't just go home alone. They, no. There were other attempts. Peter's yes. doing fine. I know. Well, I, I brought the dialogue from that moment. Oh, oh because yes, it was, please. Okay. I think it was a lot to watch. <laughs> Peter and Cynthia are standing around after, uh, outside of Club Good One. screen direction. <laughs> yeah. And Peter says simply, I live three minutes from here. And there's about a 15 minute pause. And Cynthia just says... That's awkward. And Peter says, okay, then. And then they walked away. I was like, oh, my God. It was so... Peter, what are you doing? I know, but you know what? In that moment... I felt like she was giving him some vibes. She walked in there... She walked in there to give him vibes. She had the right dress. She always looked like a million bucks, no matter what. Yes. That's just her. He said she looked like an ice cream cone. Yeah. She she had the white dress. Yes, she did. Not white, like the off white. Yes. Like the vanilla dress. Yes. She always looks good. Oh, she's flawless. Her wig game is on another level. How about you always? (laughs) She gives us something to look at. The fucking wigs, boy. Shit. It's a show and she's putting it on. And I love the purple eyeshadow. Yeah, Yeah, she's She's not playing games. So good. But but I think that was, you know, like, I I don't think she was necessarily, I think they were, they were getting along. She wants to get along, but you you don't ask, like, what are you going to, like, what do you think is going to happen? Like you're gonna go back there. Like it's then they're what? in that place. I've been in it where you're like broken up. You're still trying to be friends, but you still got anger. Like she's like, you should have invited me. He's like, well, I just wanted to give you space. And she's like, but I can still say no. Right. It's like, ooh. No, just, that's she's not having it. No, she, she's I don't clear think she's it. she's done with him. She's done with him. No, she's. I think, I think you asked this, Casey. Was do you think he, she was ever in love with him? And you said no. What do you think? It's hard to define what that means to each person, like in love, in love. I think that there was definitely something, um, mm-hmm. but I feel like there was a hesitation now that I look back on it. Um, so, you yeah, know, hindsight on hindsight's real housewives relationships are always much clearer. <laughs> because when of you, that video, too. Yeah, when and you I know guess what we happened. see footage. We yeah. see, and, and it's clear because we can see the footage now in a grainier. Don't you wish that you had that for your real life? Like, fuck. Oh, yeah. I wish I had that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, Portia's with Todd, not too, too much going there. Not that interesting, except for that weird scene with him at her mother's house. (laughs) And the fact, if anyone caught this. Blessing their sex. Uh, It was weird. It was, she's, she's so awkward to me. Yeah. Like to me, like, you know, just like, I think like, I would say, I, I think she's attractive, but like her, 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 she's so awkward and weird and like the, the fake, everything that she's done to herself. And like, she, you know, like I, I, I really feel like, you know, the fight with Kenya Moore really sort of pushed her into womanhood. 
<laughs> and then she was married to Cordell. It's true. It's true. And, wow. and all that stuff. But 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 she just like she's something's like just so contrived. Like mm-hmm. last year when she was with that football player Duke, and yes. she has like you really think you remember that, his name? Yeah, well, because I know I know he's oh, a football. Oh, right, right, but right, like right. You, you, you like, and then she has a party, and like she's bringing oh, Duke on display. Like, that was no so fucking strange. dude wants to be have a, like you're having like a party, like you're like showing him like it's like you're you're like showing like a prized pig, like mm-hmm. you know this is Duke, and like you know take your clothes and like and then she's got this guy and everything. Things like every just thing just seems disingenuous, and I don't think it's for the show. I think this is just how she is, yeah. Portia. But I, I like Portia; she cracks me up. And and, and uh, you know, I think last year she was actually the most improved player. Yes. I don't feel like she, I, I don't feel like she's the most improved player this year, but <clears throat> but I but I, I do like Portia. I, I think she's 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 a good character. I enjoy watching her. Me too. I don't think she's the brightest bulb. No one. Hell does. no. So she doesn't think she's the brightest yeah. bulb. Admittedly, no. And the fact that her mom packed up her entire house and she's what a thirty-five year old woman. I mean, yeah. it speaks to a lot about where she is maturity wise. Yeah. Yeah. Her her wig game is, is is serious too. Yeah. Meanwhile, Sheree's wig game is just like uh, been, we that with blonde one, and then yeah, she's, Sheree's she's, wig game has been off this stuff, year. But who, who who said that she had the wig? Like, um, what's her name's mom? Mama Joyce. Oh, uh, Kenya said it. Yes. Yes, Kenya said it. <laughs> that had- fight between the two of them at that table was vintage classic. <laughs> when they were going in, bitch. Bitch, bitch, and then she was like, they, they, like she, they, they, there should be like a montage. Like she said, bitch, and this time I said something, something, bitch. Like she just got on a flow. <laughs> yeah, now those women are epic. They are, can find a flow. Like yeah, almost like she's the way good. after you meditate, you're like, and it's like she's always living in that frequency. Yes. Yeah, and I, 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 I wish I lived in that frequency. I can't, like, I couldn't hop into that frequency no. even if I tried. But I am she's genuinely special. worried about Kenya and Matt. Like, there's something. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. That was scary when he's like, if you call the police if you this if you that yeah my friend joey uh recently said that she thinks that kenya is reeling him in and then pushing him away like he says i don't i'm not excusing his behavior i think he's a violent man but i do think kenya might be reeling him in i do too and then there's been accusations that you know like she's been you know using him for the show and all that stuff but i think that the, the shit that he's talking about, you're never going to do this and you, you're not going to do that. Like, that's like 911. Yeah. yeah. That's not playing around. And then yeah. he's broken the windows in the garage twice. twice. It's like, well, at least do something different. I know. Yeah, break a different window yeah. or break one high up or something. Yeah, he yeah. Maybe he's like, I know that one's easy to break. I'm not going to hurt my hand. <laughs> yeah. And then he hit the like driver. The logistics of, oh, that was so strange when he, and, but I do feel like Bravo kind of made a hit sound. I decided that that was Foley. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, that was, you know, Foley played of- a huge role in one of the storylines I too was on Watch What Happens Live with Ramona once and it was right after that one that Kristen Teichman was it Kristen threw the glass glass. no Ramona threw the glass remember when they were on in the Berkshires on the water and Ramona threw like a glass of champagne in Kristen's face yes that's what it was right yes kind of hit her tooth yes yes and it was like so worrisome and everyone was like so upset yes so I, I, that was my episode and I felt like I'm going to take this on. Like I'm going to take room, but I had no idea who I was coming up against when I met Ramona. I was like, I do whatever you say. I'm, I love you. But she told me that the Foley that they used made it sound like glass, but it was plastic. Uh, she was like, why would we bring a glass on a, on a boat? She said it was plastic. And so it really wasn't as big of a deal. Mm. So you know what? I just want to say, watch out for the Foley guys. Yeah. I just, you know, again, the sound effects, Bravo has a whole sound department. We, I don't know. <laughs> That we can trust and you them. know what? I want them to keep using. Oh yes, and I'd like them to do sound effects in my own life. Yeah. So Matt was like that mo- that bitch ass motherfucker. I reached in the car and he, he he had the window he had the window up. The way he said it, he had the window up on my neck. So I smacked that motherfucker. I was like, he, he didn't have the window on your neck. Like, <laughs> He, he, you, you're, you're out of control, Matt. Yeah. Hey, Matt. He was you're probably out of like, no, don't. No, I, I'm. He just like opened the window just a crack, just to be like, can I help you? And he was like, slap. But to go on social media and be like, my ticket was canceled. That was kind of creepy. I mean, he's really, really creepy. Although I'm, I'm enjoying Kenya and Cynthia's friendship. Yes. Feels I nice. am too, especially after last season when Cynthia sold her out to Nini. When Nini's like, "Is she your best friend?" and Cynthia's yes. like, "I mean, I wouldn't say my Cynthia's best like, friend. I hardly, know, I hardly her. know her. I don't even know her name." Like that was tough. Yeah, but Kenya okay. took it like a champ. Yeah, if someone had said that about me, I'd be like, I, "We can't be friends anymore." She was like, "I didn't like it, but I'm back." <laughs> she doesn't give a shit. Yeah, no. you like, can't face. She has yeah. zero self esteem, and sometimes that's a good thing, for, especially for a housewife. Yeah, yeah, Kenya's. And perfect for a guy like Matt. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah, that I don't know that 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 relationship is 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 is, is very dysfunctional, and uh, but but you know it, it's good for the show. But even that, I was like, they don't know about this shit. They gotta they gotta do, watch this guy because yeah, the way it seems on the show, it seems like dangerous. Now I have one more question for you. We're gonna let you end your cough. Go. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I do you are there other reality shows you're watching? Or are you just kind of tapped into the Housewives right now? What else do you watch? Um. I'm um, into. I started watching The Bachelor. Okay. Oh wow. Uh, you, so you guys really do take on a lot. Yeah, we take on a lot. <laughs> but, you know, of course. But you do it together. So <laughs> I love your relationship. Yeah. No, we do it together. Like, guy. I, I mean, The Bachelor. Watching that by yourself. There's, no. there's a fucking guy. I gotta have some dignity. Yeah, that's and dark. And it's that's also dark. so long. That's my it's three yeah, also, hours. Like, because the, there's two shows and then there's the after show. Like, yeah, I can't do that. It confuses me too because I'm just getting into it. Um. <laughs> but 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 no, nah, Housewives is my passion. Um, do we That's watch? clear. We can feel that. You know, I, I fuck with some VH1 Mariah. Oh, oh, oh I have all my notes yes, on Mariah. Mariah. Oh God, I'm so what a great transition. <laughs> oh, oh Mariah. Mariah. It's so good. Although, even though it's gotten a little boring this week, this week was a little boring. I I this week I really only wanted to watch Mariah and not her, and not everybody else. I have to say. I know. I cried when af, af, out of nowhere, they just started voiceover of Mariah going, people are jealous of my lifestyle, but they don't know what I want, which is a big family. I love to be surrounded by people and family members, and I don't have that. And then they show a picture, like her and her son yes. in a indoor kind of playhouse, playhouse with and the weird Legos. Yeah. And I just felt her pain. Like, she wants a big family. She wants that, and she doesn't have it. She needs, listen, Mariah is built for reality television. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And did you hear about that like open <laughs> letter that um, Tommy Matola? Did you read that? No. No, I don't even hear He about wrote that. an open letter just to Mariah after the New Year's thing happened that was basically like, when I manage you, none of this should happen. You need to change all of your people. They're fucking with you. Like all these logistics should be 100% better and you should not be on this reality show. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I agree with the first part of that. Yes, but not the second. But she's so she much has more be, endearing. She's perfect for these shows. She's built. She was yes. made for the reality show. She was not made to sing. She was made for this show. No, I love her singing. It, 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 did you see my Mariah Carey challenge? No. no. I, I got to send you my Mariah. Yes, please. Because I was so fucking confused by what happened on New Year's. But I know what it was. See, they say, oh, she's a diva. She's a diva. And I, I honestly... Like, I think that I was offended by that because a real diva, a real true diva, you could be a pain in the ass, you could be late, you could be bitchy, but you're going to, a real diva, like a real badass, you're never going to let that shit happen. Whether it's your stand and doing the, 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 the walkthrough or this one doing the walkthrough, that's just being a, a you know, like someone who doesn't give a shit. That's mm-hmm. not diva behavior. That's like, you know, like a diva, you can fucking snap at people, but when you, when it's time to shine... That would never happen to Diana Ross, to Beyonce. Those are Cher. Those are fucking, even Madonna. She would never let no shit like that happen. Yeah. She would, mm-hmm. And if it was happening, she'd figure it out in the moment. She's not going to just, ah, ah, and have some <laughs> big dude lift her up. And, ah, ah, ah. Like, so she's like, I'm a diva. I don't think she's a diva. I think she's, I, oh. I think there's, she's another one. I think yeah. she's some, like, she's a, skating wrong. on thin ice. Yeah. And she's always in a fucking leotard. Yeah. Or if, if that, that's too much clothing. Mm-hmm. She's Mariah, always in a bra. You're not dope. You're 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 forty something years old, and I'm not ageism and women, but like you're not that chick anymore. Your time to be in a fucking Mary Lou Retton outfit every single week <laughs> is over. Right. Stop it. Put some fucking clothes on. I don't understand why you know like these pop stars they don't want to age with grace and dignity. No. It doesn't mean you can't be sexy. And I'm not saying older you know yeah. like a, a pop star shouldn't be sexy, but there's like you're not going to be the same sexy as you were twenty. You could still be sexy. It's like um. Uh, what's her name? I saw that. What's the, what's Annie Lennox? Yeah. Uh-huh. She performed last year at some event and it was sexy because of her performance. She had on like a black, um, like, like a, uh, like a, like a men's suit, Tuxedo. but it was a woman's mm-hmm. and she killed it. And I was, and she's like 60, mm-hmm. but it was because she was so in her body. Like these women, like Madonna with the fake ass and Mariah Carey with the fucking leotards all the time. And she's pilled out in the hair. Like, I don't know what. Maybe in Czechoslovakia, she does those tours and they sell out. But I, I she, like, I can understand why Tom Matola is like, yo, you look nuts. You yeah. look literally like Lady Sings the Blues. You look crazy. <laughs> so, wow. Wow. Well, and I'm saying that as a fan. No, I'm saying that. It like, makes it, I'm embarrassed for her. Yeah, like, yeah. you're someone's mom. Like, like just, you're not going to be the same sexy as you were 20 years ago. Nor am I, nor is anybody. 
So I think, th- and I love to watch it, but I think she is surrounded by the wrong team. And I'm not saying that's Tommy what he was is that team because yeah, he I was agree. not great for her either, just as her husband. But I do think that the Stella woman, they, no one's calling the shots. Everyone's having too much fun. Too much. Yeah. And I know it's a show and all that But stuff, it's at but, her expense. Yeah. Truly. It's at the yeah. expense of her as a singer. And as a performer. There's a reason why that Nick Cannon relationship, like he like saw something and he was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Like he, it wasn't like it was dragged out. He was like, this is done. He, something spooked him. Yeah. Cause he's, I don't know him very well, but he seems like a good guy and he seems like his intentions were good. And something happened where he was like, oh no. And he shut it down, whatever. And they, they came to an agreement. He was like, I'm fucking done. Yeah. Same with the other guy. There's, there's something happens where like they get to a point where they, they, she spooks people, I think. She hasn't spooked me yet on the show. <laughs> She's yeah, still on no. board. I haven't had enough. <laughs> She's the most interesting thing of the show and that Molly girl. So this week, Molly wasn't in it. Yeah. And it was a lot but about her Stella, dancers. her manager needs yes. to be fired. Yes. yes. She needs a real manager that's not her friend. Why is she getting to shows late? Or not her husband. Getting to shows late is the sound. Like why on. are they on the plane? And they're like, we're supposed to be at the show. Right. Like, why is that happening? And it's happened twice. I mean, I've been New on Year's like, Eve? I've been on like small improv show touring companies where we're like, yeah, we're going to get there on time. <laughs> like, we know how to get there on time. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, that's that's the, I think that's the gist of my. I'm so glad that we opened up that pot, that door for you, yeah. The Mariah. Yeah. I I, I I I just think it's pathetic for her, like, and I, and I just think it's pathetic for like Madonna to be have her ass out, and you got a fake ass hanging. You look fucking nuts. You look cra- You're so much better than that. Mm. Like you could still be dope, still be sexy, you, you, but you're not going to be the same sexy you were when you did Lucky Star. Why is your ass? It's obviously not really your ass hanging out, Madonna. Hmm. What the fuck is wrong? Like, I don't get it. Why do you want to still do that shit? Yeah. Same with Mariah. Like, well, you're not Mary Lou Retton. It's not the Olympics. Why do you have a leotard on? <laughs> Bella Caroli's not coming out. Like, there's no, you know. Like, That's a, can I tell you, I'm attracted to Bella Caroli. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted him to pick you That's up when you had a bag. All I want is for weird. me to like after you landed carry, a ten, like land my land my roundoff back handspring back <laughs> talk, and then be carried away by Bella. To yes, bed. I got you. <laughs> oh my god, I got you. I understand. Wow, I don't know what it is, but wow. I'm very attracted wow. to him. Michael, <laughs> wow. you've given everything so you have. Well, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. I, I want to plug your podcast. Yes. Um, it's called I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Yes. yes. And please, everyone, check it out. He's hilarious. He's lovely. Uh, this has been a so treat. nice. Thank and you. you were so generous to do the show. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I'm a fan. No, I'm a fan. And shout out to your wife, who's yes. lovely. Yes. 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 And I thank her honestly for getting you into yeah. this good. Work. I thank her too. I thank her too. For, she gave for, you a gift. I totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank maybe you. one time there'll, there'll be a, an Atlanta. Like New York overlap, so we we'll have like because those like New York, Atlanta, Jersey, those mm. seem to be really your hotbed. Oh, yeah, and Orange County, I've noticed you haven't mentioned. You know what? I never, I I never got. I was late to the program, and I know I heard it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But you can't take on them all. You can't take on them all, and I'm so far behind. But I've heard nothing but great things <laughs> yeah. about Atlanta. I mean, about uh, oh yeah, Orange it's County. a treasure. It's a it's a it's a jewel in the crown. I've yeah. heard. I heard it's a it's a definitely. A jewel in the crown, or some would say a crowning jewel. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I appreciate you guys having me. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. Thank you. Wow, guys. Michael <sighs> Rappaport. He had so many gems. So many gems. He is a historian. He really is. He's the male spokesperson for maybe the housewives. He really is like... Oh, 100%. He really has such a fantastic view. And I feel like he loves and respects women is what I got out of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Which I liked. I'm so glad he was here. Me too. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Before we go, I just want to mention one quick thing, which is that um, many of our listeners, I know for a fact, are attending the Million Women March in Washington, D.C., as am I, Mm -hmm. as is June Diane Rayfield, Morgan Walsh. Cool up, Eli Sack. A lot of uh, women who have been on this show. We're Anna's gonna, going. Anna Ortiz, mm-hmm. yes. Jamie Dembo, Jessica Chaffin. A lot of women who have been on the show. April is coming with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're all heading I'm out. I'm not to- going. Fuck women. <laughs> yeah. I Danielle. <laughs> I'm going to do it in LA. I'm going to do it in LA. Made her stance very clear. <laughs> <laughs> She's with herself. I'm with myself. And by myself, I'm going to be home masturbating. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> to the Menendez Brothers, <laughs> Menendez Brothers documentary. <laughs> um, what I just wanted to mention very quickly is that um, 
there is an after party after the march. If people are looking for something to do that's for a good cause, it's going to be a show, a comedy show that I'm performing in. It is at uh, Funnier Dies, hosting it along with Planned Parenthood at the 930 Club in Washington. And this is the day of the march on the 21st. Tickets are going to go on sale very soon, and I will tweet a link. But I think it's going to sell out. But so far, they have uh, the band The National, Samantha Ronson, uh, Carmen Esposito, June Diane Raphael, Rana and Bev, Morgan Walsh. Two dope queens. Two dope queens. How could I forget? I know. The headliners. I know. Uh, it's going to be an absolutely great night and a way to get a drink, commiserate, and watch some comedy with everything going to Planned Parenthood and their newest mission, which kicks off post-inauguration, which is hashtag I defy. And um, I'll keep you posted on that next week with more details. But I hope you guys join us at the 930 Club on the 21st. I will be there in spirit. Oh, Danielle. (laughs) No, I will. No, of course I will. I'll be in Washington literally by myself. I mean, I'll be in L.A. by myself. Well, with thousands of other women that I just don't know. But I'll be marching solo. Everyone will be in D.C. We do what we can do. (laughs) Guys, thanks for tonight. You were really with us. You really were. What a great night. Bye. Bye. Thank you, April. Yes. Friends, why not take a trip to Spontanea Nation, where hours of listening pleasure await you. Hours made up of moments. Moments like these. Guys, maybe we should put our cards on the table here. Okay. I feel like one or two or all of us might be, and this is going to sound weird, and please don't hate me for saying this, human killing robots. Oh, what a relief. I am. Thank you so much. I am too. Oh, I am oh too. Oh my God. I killed Roberto. Oh my God. And you're going to sing a solo way hilarious. Yeah, I know. Oh, that is I very know. ironic. Yeah, right? right? Is that irony? I think so. Let me listen to that one song and I'll get back to you. I can do it later. <laughs> Listen to Spontanea Nation with me, Paul F. Tompkins, on Earwolf, iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. This has been an Earwolf production, executive produced by Scott Ackerman and Chris Bannon. For more information and content, visit Earwolf.com. Earwolf.